Welcome, everybody, to another great CEO podcast. My name is Jim Schlexer. I'm your host, and I have with me today another great CEO, Igor Epstein from Coherent Solutions. Welcome, Igor. Thank you, Jim. Good morning. How are you? I yeah, appreciate you taking the time today. Um, maybe we could just start with, um, tell me a little bit about yourself and what your company does. All right. Uh, again, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my name is Igor Epstein. I am the CEO of uh, Coherent Solutions. Uh, our company it provides digital software product development services. So we specialize in software development, work with a number of different companies of different sizes and industries across the board, primarily in the United States. Uh, what unites uh, 99% of our clients is that they all focused on digital engineering and building software products for their clients, whether external or internal. Okay, so you provide the actual engineers and the competency behind them to make their product, basically. Exactly, to assist them. In some instances, we provide the full team from the beginning to the end that would include uh, UI UX designers, that would include business analysts, project managers. In some instances, it's a little bit more focused on specific expertise. Right. Uh, so that's, uh, but uh, we have roughly about 2,000 people in the company and have expertise across the board and variety of different technologies and variety of different skills. Nice. Um, now, there are other people that do this, right? I mean, I, you can find people that have this capability, whether they're outsourcing to India or wh wherever they're, they're doing the labor arbitrage. So what makes your company different than the other? If I Googled this, I'd find 20 companies. Why you guys? So, uh, yeah, it's a good question. And it's a, it's a little bit of a challenging question, especially in the services industry, right? We don't have any tangible uh, elements that you can say we're uh, the best because we weigh less or weigh more and so on and so forth. So in, in, in the services industry, it's different. So uh, when we uh, think about this, when we analyze the company, it's not just one factor that comes in mind. It's a combination of a few. So we've been in business for about close to 30 years. We've been finding and uh, honing our delivery model. So the delivery model is, is complex, includes multiple bits and pieces. So that's one key element. The second one, truly, at the end of the day, it's the expertise that people have, knowledge that they have, not just in a specific technology, but also their knowledge and uh, how to put it all together. I think last but not least is truly uh, the, the culture in the company that uh, elevates people from just uh, uh, silently silent execution elements to becoming truly true members of a team, having a culture of commitment, having a culture of inclusiveness, having consistent training, involving people in each and every step. Uh, the combination of all these factors makes us unique, positions us uniquely. In addition to that, uh, as I said, since we have been in this industry for quite a long time, we have a, a number of very strong, loyal clients that really more passionate and probably in some instances know more about our business than we do because mm. they've been working with us for such a long time. So again, uh, to your point, there are lots of companies. The industry is huge. Uh, lots of companies, lots of geographies, lots of uh, uh, people who are involved. But at the end of the day, the service is a service and the quality of the service is complex and consists of multiple different elements. So I think we'll bring it all together. Interesting. Um, so along those lines, what percentage of your revenue recurs every year or is it, is it sort of contractually committed or is it project to project to project that you work with people? So um, it's, uh, it's kind of in between to what you just said. So uh, we don't have, particular contractual commitment. So we don't have the, the client uh, X commits to certain uh, volume with us. Uh, they we, we typically sign a general uh, master services agreements that regulates the relationships. And then we can have either open-ended SLW or SLW for each particular engagement within that client. Yeah. Uh, to your question, what percentage? It's more than 90%. Wow. So we, uh, we have a very stable... Uh, very good client base. Uh, we're very proud of that. We work hard on that and we try to provide services consistently. Our clients have the right terminate agreements most of the time at any time uh, with a short notice. Uh, it's only the good work that we have to put in place and kind of keep up with the demand and needs keeps us in, in the game. So our 
renewal percentage on every year is uh, we have to update new business with less than 10%. Nice. That's well, fabulous. Easier business to grow when you have that. Yeah. That's, that's right. <laughs> um, so in every business, um, there's a point of constraint, something that stops you from being you know, as profitable or grow as fast as you'd like to. It's almost like de-bottlenecking code, right? They have to figure out where the point of constraint is. And so if you had a magic wand, you could change one thing about your business at the point of constraint, what would it be for you? So it changed a little bit over the last 12 months, mm. uh, point of constraint. So it's it's always it's always the, the point of constraint in this business is either demand or supply, which is yeah. quite mm -hmm. basic, right? So uh, demand was so hot. Uh, especially increasingly in my in our industry, it's surprising that maybe for some people, but in our industry, uh, 2020 and 2021 were years of incredible growth. We grew more than 30 percent both of this uh, each of these years. Wow! And with that, a lot of constraints goes on the supply side. So we yeah. have uh, locations in multiple countries, finding people, finding qualified people, not only technically, but culturally aligned with our core values, with our elements was the biggest constraint. So at that time, if we could only find enough people fast enough, we could probably grow 50%. Mm. Um, when I said it changed a little bit, because we all know what the state of the economy now, whether we're in real recession, the perceived recession, it remains to be seen. But what what is clear is that the certainty and the confidence is down. So the spend across the board has slowed down. Mm. And at this point, the constraint on the demand side. So uh, selling new services uh, when it's such a big ticket item and it's intangible and it's, it's, it's a challenging task. So uh, being able to succinctly present yourself in the marketplace without relationships, pre-existing relationships with people, it's a challenge. So uh, as I said in, in, in the beginning, it's, uh, it's hard to pinpoint one challenge or another. For a very long time, it was on the supply side. Now it kind of shifted a little bit on the demand side. And we have to, we're making a lot of additional investments in, in sales, marketing, and other client-facing functions. Got it. Yeah. And I, and I think, you know, your experience of the constraint moving over time, that's normal, right? Once you kind of resolve or the market resolves one of them, it moves somewhere else. There's always a point of constraint. It's just a matter of where it is, you know? Exactly, exactly. Um, moving over to more, more how you engage with the business, how many hours a week do you work nowadays? It's, it's, it's really difficult to say exact number of hours because I don't like work eight hours straight. Yeah. One day uh, starts early because we have a lot of uh, uh, locations in, in Europe. Sometimes we have meetings at 6 a.m. and sometimes we have meetings even prior to this. Mm -hmm. um, and then sometimes it ends really late. But it doesn't mean that I work throughout all those hours. I mean, I like working out. I will this and that. Probably uh, if I add up all the time that I'm thinking about business, doing something, right? And it's probably going to be, I don't know, 60 hours maybe. But it's not, but it's, sometimes it's hard to call it work because it's kind of like my life. I, yeah. I live this life and I... And I like it. So, uh, and some weeks it would be less, some weeks it would be more. But that's kind of my my days, uh, pretty much spotted with different buckets. Of this, you know, I, some CEOs when I ask that question, they go, "Well, when I'm awake, <laughs> I'm probably thinking about it one way or the other, right?" So, um, that's so right. It's a weird question. Used to be going to an office. It's a weird question nowadays, I think. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, in line with as growing, particularly as fast as you've grown the last few years, yeah. we have to shed some responsibilities. We have to delegate. And then as you can do higher value work. Right. Can you name one major responsibility that you've delegated, gotten rid of in the last six months? Yeah, so it's it's hard to say one major responsibility because nothing really changed that drastically over the last six months. We have a great team. Mm -hmm. We have a great team of people. As I said, we have multiple locations. We're located in 10 different countries. So we, we have uh, uh, country managers running each location. Uh, we have people responsible for delivery, finance, sales, markets, and so on and so forth. So uh, I was thinking a little bit about that, but it's hard to say for me, uh, nothing of that significance happened the mm -hmm. last six months. Uh, I'm just trying to um, truly um, work at any given point of time on one or two priorities, trying to kind of sort of shield myself from 
everything else that comes my way because at any given point of time there is only few priorities that are absolutely vital for the company so uh again i don't unfortunately think of one element that i removed myself from over the last six months if, if anything just based on the intensity in the world i probably took a little bit more over the last six months than i had before okay cool um if we had to describe your leadership technique uh, approach as CEO, how would people describe you as CEO? I uh, I like to trust people. I like to trust people, and I believe that everyone uh, has an opportunity to sort of fail and make mistakes once, twice. They need to learn on these mistakes. I like to trust people. I like to dig in the details with the people who. Uh, work in our company and understand the details of what they're involved in. Um, so, um, and truly try to logically understand and align uh, organization in where we have the right leaders. Uh, I think if you, if you can bring not necessarily specific instructions, what people should do or shouldn't do, but you can bring the inspiration and you can actually motivate people to uh, go and execute certain tasks, you get a lot more results, a lot better results, that top-down kind of dominant yeah. approach because that's, at least in our company, uh, it doesn't really work. So uh, a lot of moving parts, a lot of um, kind of uh, challenges and complexities, but having the right people in the right place is the key. And trust is probably the name of the game. Interesting. Yeah, you know, you can't, hire people for their brains and their capability and then not let them use it. Right. It's exactly. kind of doesn't go together. Exactly. Or you um, just have their own people. Yeah. Um, and then a last question, just what do you do for fun? Oh, for fun. I, you know, I, I love, um, I love life. I, I love, uh, I love everything that life gives us. So I appreciate and try to appreciate every day uh, that, that the way around. So it's um, I love travel. I love fitness. Uh, I love exploring um, different places. I love um, mountain hiking. Uh, just, you know, I don't have any particular strong hobby that I'm dedicated to, but uh, I love fun shows on TV as well. So mm. if I have time to watch something new. I really enjoy it. But again, uh, in general, um, I, I like to travel. Last year, I traveled a lot in different countries, traveled in, in the United States and everywhere else, exploring different uh, places and getting to know people. That's, that's, that's the finest thing, I think, that's, Very cool. that I like about life, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Uh, well, this was, uh, this was great, where I really appreciate the time and you got a great company and I wish you uh, very good luck going forward. So thank you. Thank you very much, Jim. I appreciate your time as well. Thank you for reaching out.